Ezra chapter 4. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. All right, the next thing, when you get right with the Lord, Paul says it best. Yea, all they that will live godly shall suffer persecution. As Ezra and the, and the people want to get right and do something for God, here comes the adversaries. Like I said, the, the temple is going to be built in the future with the Antichrist. You gotta wonder if there's gonna be any adversaries. Like I said, there's a possibility he's gonna build that temple, knowing that's the way he's the only way he's gonna get the Jews to be gathered together in one spot for him. That may be a trap and a snare that the Bible's always speaking about. The enemy has laid a trap for me, the enemy has laid a snare. Listen, if there's a possibility in America today if you're going to get every Christian you you get them every you get them Sunday morning you have a good chance at least gathering 75 percent of them on Sunday morning the rest of me I guess you're going to, have to get a rowboat and go out to the lake and get them so now the opposition shows up as it always does when those who get right we've seen it through second Chronicles and you're going to see it again. Then they came to Zerubbabel and to, and to the chief of the fathers and said unto him, Let us build with you. For we seek your God. These are lies. As ye do, we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esh Hadan, king of Ashur. That's a lie. Which brought us up hither. They want an ecumenical movement. They want to get part of it. They're lying to them. They'll say anything they want to say to try to get you to believe them. There's a lot of people in the churches today. They, they said a lot of things and the churches believe them and they allow them in. And that's why we're in the mess we're in today. I mean, there's a thing called in the New Testament church discipline. You know, there are so many people in the church today that are wrong, who don't love the Lord. And if the church did right, if the church lived right, they would be uncomfortable. They would not feel welcome. But Zerubbabel, Joshua, the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, You have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Wow, aren't they, Zerubbabel and Joshua, aren't they just mean people? No, you can't join us. They knew who the enemy is. And Yeshua and Zerubbabel says, we're going to build the work. How many unsaved men out there build churches in America and never do get saved? When they build these churches, the pastor never shows up to the work site to try to witness to them. I'll tell you what I would do, which I wouldn't do, but if I were to do, if I were to build a church and have people outside the church build the church on my property, I'd be there when workers show up and be preaching all day long. What are they going to do? Walk off the job? Then you get the people in the church to do the work. They're singing praises to God on the job site. They're doing things for God for the job site. You bring this enemy in. You bring in the heathen gods. And guess what will happen? You'll get rid of God. Solomon did that. Right after his building project. He brought his thousand wives in. And look what happened. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah. So see, they were not part of the program. 
The ecumenical, the infiltration didn't work. All right, so now we'll weaken the hands of the people of Judah and trouble them in building. Sabotage. And hire counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. All the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even unto the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Isn't that great? These are people that wanted to join the church, and now they're hiring people to go against the frustration to work. You know, you don't have this permit, or you guys can't do this, or blah, 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 whatever. In the reign of Araherses, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him and an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. Now they're going to go to slander. These are the guys in the beginning of the chapter who wanted to join and build in the work. You know, there are people inside the church house today, they're infiltrated, they ecumenicalized, and they're sabotaged, there's uh, uh, frustration, there's slander. Ezra got it outside. It's happening inside the church. In the days that Xerxes wrote the Shiloh, Metheretheth, Tabiel, the rest of the companions unto Artaxerxes, king of Persia. The writing of the letter was written in the Syrian tongue and interpreted in the Syrian tongue. Reham, the chancellor, and Shimshali, the scribe, wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes, the king, in this sort. Then wrote Reham, the chancellor, and Shimshali, the scribe, and the rest of their companions, the Danonites, the Aphrodites, the Tarpolites, the Aphrodites, the Archivites, the Babylonians, the Shenshakites, the Devahites, and the Amalites. Boy, they just got a whole bunch of people. And the rest of the nations whom the great and noble and the Nassifer brought over and set in the cities of Samaria and the rest that were on this side of the river at the such a time. They really want to stop this work. The United Nations today wants to stop any work against Israel. You can have Jordan, you can have the PLO, you can have anybody launch missiles. They can launch five or six missiles a day into Israel, but when Israel launches their one missile in retaliation, oh, all the media gets upset. Israel has bombed a bunch of kids playing in the playground and wherever. Yeah, after 36 missiles that attack Israel, <coughs> this is the copy of the letter that sent unto him, even unto Artaxerxes the king, the servants that the men on the this side of the river, and at such a time. Now that side of the river means that that's not the Jordan River. That's the Euphrates River. Here's the letter. Amazing how God kept the letter. How did God get a hold of the letter? To put it in his holy Bible. That when these guys stand before the great white throne judgment, this letter is going to be opened up in the book of Ezra. I honestly believe what man writes will come back and haunt him, good or bad. Be it known unto the king that the Jews which came up from thee to us are coming to Jerusalem. That's where they belong. What are they doing there? That ain't their land. So they came up to us. 
It's not their land. Building the rebellious and the bad city. Well, wrong. They're not building the city. They're building the temple. So, already they're lying. And have set up the walls thereof and joined the foundation of the temple. Be it known, uh, be it, you see, they didn't lie, but they didn't tell the full truth. That's what everyone calls a white lie. Lie is a lie. If they told the truth, they would say that they come into Jerusalem having built, having building the rebellious and bad temple, and have set up the walls thereof and joined the foundations of the temple. But they're making the king believe the city. That comes later on the Nehemiah. Be it known unto the king. If this city be builded, no, it's not the city. It's the temple they're building. And the wall set up again. Then will they not pay toll tribute. That's up to God. That is based on upon the conduct of what Judah will treat God. And how far God will let them through that be, in, be a power. And it really didn't go too far because when Jesus shows up, Rome is in charge. And they're paying taxes to Rome. So this statement is false based upon Jesus Christ. Because wasn't one of the questions they came up to him, they wanted to trick Jesus. Is it good to give to, is it good to pay taxes or not, Jesus? Well, let me show me, let me show me a piece of coin. Whose picture and, and, and image on? Well, Caesar's. Give unto Caesar the things that belong to Caesar. So they were paying taxes. So these guys are lying. Scripture with Scripture. You read in a few in Second Chronicles that they were paying money to Egypt and they were paying money to Babylon. Only a certain king would come in and then not pay. So this is not a true title. These guys are half liars. Oh, we don't celebrate the birthday of Jesus, but happy birthday to you. Happy, wait a minute. Be it known to the king that if this city be builded and the walls set up again then will they not pay toll tribute that's a tax and custom and so they shall in damage the revenue of the king I really don't think so I mean this guy if you read Ezra Nehemiah and Esther he had a big amount of province matter of fact being sent by Darius to be searching of God of Israel, the God of the temple, take this stuff and go worship the God of the Bible, the God that, that Dyrus claimed. Doing all that would give even more greater wealth because God would be on their side. Now because we have because we have maintenance from the king's palace, it was not meet for us to see the king's dishonor. Yeah, right. They're buttering the king, fattening him up like a turkey for Thanksgiving. You know, we're looking out for you, king. You know, you like living in the land that's not yours. Therefore, we have sent and certified the king. That search may be made in the book of the records of the fathers. So shalt thou find the book of the records and know that this city is rebellious city. Well, yes, it is. Rebellious to sin. And false gods. And idolatry and killing your own children. But that's what you mean. But no, they don't mean that. And hurtful unto kings and provinces. 
Yeah. Of the seven nations that were in the land of Canaan did not belong there. Only. And it says even in their law, if it would be an outside nation, outside the land, they can go in and say, seek peace. And not fight the land. But only the inhabitants of the land of Cana are they were they to destroy. They have moved sedition within the same of the old time, for which cause this city was destroyed. The city was destroyed because of sin. The city was destroyed because they forsook God. The city was destroyed because of Second Chronicles thirty six, eleven to twenty one. And Jeremiah 40, 1 through 3. We certify the king that if this city be built again, it's not the city. It's the temple. The wall set thereof set up by means that should. By this means thou shalt no portion on this side of the river. No, they're being sent by dyers under dyers. Matter of fact, in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah goes back to the king for a while to report back to him. There is no rebellion. Then sent the king an answer unto Rehum, the chancellor, and to Shimshali, the scribe, and to the rest of their companions that dwell in Samaria, and unto the rest beyond the river, peace. And at such a time, peace. God says in Isaiah, there is no peace to the wicked. The letter which he sent unto us has been plainly read before me. And I command and search and has been made. And it is found that this city of old time has made insurrection against kings. For God, by God. And that rebellion and sedition have been made therein. You see what sin has done to the nation? You got to say amen to that statement. Because of sin. There have been mighty kings over Jerusalem, David and Solomon, which have ruled over countries beyond the river, and toll, tribute, and customs was paid unto them. Very true. Give ye now commandment to cause these men to cease. And that the city be not builded until another commandment shall be given from me. Give you now commandment to cause these men to cease, and that this city be not builded. Thank God that's not a period. Because the law of the of the of Cyrus. The law of our exercises, the laws of the Persian and Medes is when you when you put a bill or a law to law, you can never change it. Ask Mordecai. You saying what are you saying? Until another commandment shall be given for me. There's going to be another commandment. He tells him to stop the work, but if another commandment comes from me, things will change. He writes in the law that can't be changed that there may be a possibility to change the law. A providence of the Holy Spirit and God, because he's going to write a decree. He's going to say, let them build. See how God intervenes? See how God protects his, pil his, his people? How many Jews thought, oh my God, that's it, we're done. We can't. And they didn't get the last part. The last part of that verse is God. Yeah, the work's going to stop, but the king is going to have it restart. And make it lawful. Take heed now that ye fail not to do this. Fail to stop them. Why should damage grow to the hurt of the kings? <clears throat> Verse 
It's kind of funny that these kings are so stupid. You know, the king under Daniel. Oh, yeah, no one prayed to any god. Yeah, okay, I'll sign it. And then he tried to help, he tried all night to try to protect Daniel. This king was about to sign a law that was going to be against God. The king listened to Haman and said, yeah, sure, I'll sign this. Here's my ring. And the President of the United States, yeah, great. Sodomites can get married. Rulers are stupid. Now when the copy of when the copy of King Arzur's letter was read before Rahum and Shishami the scribe, and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and made them cease by force and by power, police action. Then ceased the work of the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. So they ceased on the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Everything looks bad. But it ain't. God is still in control. God still has things to be done. It ain't over.